So like, do you feel like um, like you got plans like doing like a commercial or something like for or sure. Like saying saying it out loud more so people get the ring to it. Yeah, for sure. Like when you look it up and how Google has like you know now verb. Yeah. And it it spells out how to say the word. I definitely want something like comical to show people how to how to pronounce it. Ethereal. <laughs> it's easy. Ethereal. Yeah. Around with Syria. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's Florida's TV. We got a special episode today. I'm your boy, Shooting Arrow. I'm here with... Courtney. And we're here to talk about the brand Ethereal. Sure. And the relaunch of it. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, before we, get, before we get back into, like, the business and the fashion mm -hmm. and the art, like, what's your, like, perspective of life? Like, I don't know what I was thinking about when I thought of this question, but, like, like what's your perspective of life? Like, you know, some people think, like... You, you you work hard, you be nice to people, you be honest, you have a family, you leave something for the next generation. Like, what's your thoughts on that? Um, like, my, my, not, like, not, like, you don't have to have the same one, but, like, what's yeah. your perspective of life? I just think that people should live their life to just be genuinely happy. Um, I feel like nowadays everything is just money-driven. Like, people just want to be up. People just want to have money. People want to be lit on social media. Um... People like integrity these days. They like substance these days. So I feel like when you're genuinely happy within yourself, your life is going to be lit. You don't have to show it. You don't have to talk about it. You're going to feel it, and the people around you are. And I feel like the way you, pe you, the way you treat the people around you really like speaks volumes on who you are as a person and speaks volumes on your character. Um, yeah, life is good as long as you are. <laughs> yeah. So how does that translate into into the business, into your brand? It translates directly into the business because, like, ethereal means too perfect for this world. So if you live your life and that's how you feel about yourself, genuinely, like, you know, it ain't nothing wrong feeling like you're too good because you, you should feel like that because if you don't feel like that about yourself, then the next person going to carry you, you know, however they want to. Um so being too perfect for this world, wearing ethereal on your back, like, should give you some sort of confidence, some sort of drive to really show out every day. Like, every day you should show up, show up, show out, you know, live your life, do great things, be honest, you know, be direct, be intentional. And, yeah, I think, yeah, it pours directly into the brand. Right. For sure. That's fine. So, so like, too perfect for life, like, or too perfect for this world, like, can you speak about, like, how you can be humble and get hurt by it? Um, I think humility comes from, like, within. Like, you can be humble for sure, but you still can carry yourself in a way where it's, like, people know that you were forced to be reckoned with. Like, people going to treat you how you feel about yourself. So, yeah, be humble, be graceful, be kind, but don't sell yourself short at the same time. And I don't think being humble is selling yourself short. I think it's just being, you know, you adopt to different um, environments and situations. So when it's the time and the place for you to gas yourself up and be in your bag, do that. When it's time for you to really get down to the nitty-gritty and be humble and be honest with yourself, that's important too. Um, I don't think that being humble or showing humility, hum I don't think that being humble will um, harm you in the end. I don't. That's real. Yeah. I think if anything, it'll take you further because people feel like you're relatable. Yeah. So for like, so like, for like, so like you do like a brand campaign for e Ethereal, mm -hmm. like what's like the, your go-to aesthetic? Clean. I would say something that's clean cut, that's neutral, um, not too many, like, not too much going on, something that's direct, something that's, that the audience can focus on directly. Like, you know, like even with my launch party, my launch party is all white. Um, the guests are going to come in all white attire in January. Yeah, and I only I color, can pull that off. I know I can pull it off. Yeah, you got a color palette, but the color palette is white and cream. You know, so it's like everybody, you know, a lot of people were like, 
how are you going to have people come out in January and it's white? And it's like, why can't you wear white after Labor Day? Like, yeah. do, like, do you? And it's like, I know I can throw an all-white event in January. Can you put that, yeah, can you come fly yeah. in all-white in January? So I know I know it's going to be a good event. Like, And people are going to be so surprised that everybody is going to have on some slick, hot, cream. It's going to be lit. <laughs> So do you, so that's like going against the grain. I didn't even I didn't even look at it like that. Yeah, it is. But it follows like when you just ask like what's the aesthetic? Like clean cut. Like everything is going to be clean and branded. So Yeah. And you don't care if, if anybody got a problem with it. No. I don't think people don't have a problem with it. <laughs> right, right, right. We yeah. No, I know I know it's going to be pulled off. And I feel like the confidence that I'm giving the audience at the same time like yeah, Everybody who ain't here and they all white, they don't belong. <laughs> yeah. You here and you're all white because you know that you can pull this off. So, yeah. What if somebody came in, like, with the wrong color? Mm, they mm, <laughs> they won't be in no pictures or nothing. Yeah. They're going to mess up my aesthetic. That's better than not letting them in. No, I'm not I'm not that person. You buy a ticket to come, you coming. Yeah. You, you excited? For I, I am beyond excited, like... It's been a long time coming, so I've been talking about, it's so crazy because the event that I'm throwing, I've been talking about it for years, like, for so long. It's so crazy. I always wanted an all-white party for my birthday, and in high school, I used to have, like, these basement parties for my birthday. That's tough. <laughs> in one year, I actually wore all-white, like, that's how serious it is. I think I was turning 16. Yeah, I think I was turning 16, and I wore all-white to my basement party. <laughs> Was it like a DJ down there and stuff? No, we just had like a playlist running. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was lit. But that that's, that goes into my next question. Like, I don't know what bag I was in. I thought of this question either. But mm -hmm. I right, so like, if if the, if the Courtney from ten years ago, right, could see the Courtney from today, you know, of course she'd be proud, right? But do you you know how you got these misconceptions of age? Like when you're younger, like oh, when I'm this age, I'm gonna be yeah. doing this. So, like, what do you think your younger self would, would look at the the present you and be like, oh, that's missing. Like, damn, why am I not where that's at? Um, I would say at age 15 versus 25, I think that by 25, my 15-year-old self wanted to be, like, some super crazy millionaire. Now, I never wanted to be famous. Like, I've always said that. I never wanted to be famous. Never wanted to be, like... On the scene, I always just wanted to be wealthy and have money. Um, I think 15-year-old Court would definitely be proud of me, like, for sure. Like, she would definitely be proud of me. She is, like, I am definitely somebody that my younger self would look up to and um, kind of, like, recognize certain things. Like, even, I can even speak from being 15 and looking at certain people and how I felt towards them. It was just like, dang, like... Y'all got life together. Like, everything is just in place. Everything is just, you seem so happy. Like, you know what I mean? I feel like 15-year-old court can look at my life and agree. Like, yeah, you got it going on. That's good. Yeah. So what what happened in 2019 that you you were saying earlier? Um, It was just a rough year. Like, it was, it was a rough year, you know, from start to finish. I felt like the end of the year was perfect. Um, 2019, I lost a close friend. Um, I was pregnant. I was trying to finish college. Uh, at the end of 2019, um, you know, I had my son. I'm still in undergrad. I was even taking him to class with me some days. Like, anything I needed to do to finish school is exactly the work that I put in to finish. Whether, you know, like, it was kind of like a year that people counted me out because of the situations that was going on in my life. Like, it was, like, from the outside looking in, people were just like, ain't no way. Like, ain't no way you can do this. Ain't no way you can finish this. Ain't no way you're going to turn out to be how I am now. So I would say um, 2019 was a rough year, but it was a growing year. It was a year that I needed. It was, like, it was, it was, a, it was crazy. Like, it was crazy emotionally. Like, I went through a lot of things emotionally. Um... And mentally, I would say, like, my life really changed. It was like I was grieving. I was going through postpartum. I was heartbroken. Like, it was a lot of the things going on that was, like, 
where it was like the odds were stacked against me. Um, but instantly, once 2020 hit, it was just like my mindset was just, you know, I'm looking at my child and I'm like, yeah, I got to I got to make something happen. So he was born in December 2019. January was my birthday. I had just turned 21. And I was like, yeah, this this has to change. Like my mindset where I was uh, mentally just had to change. And um, actually, I had a conversation with my best friend, and it was like a conversation that I needed to have, and she never even responded. Like, you know how, like, it was kind of like, you know how you have a conversation with somebody, and sometimes you just have to pour out what you're feeling inside, and you don't really need feedback. Like, you don't need to hear their opinion. You don't need to hear what they would do or how they can help. Like, it was just, it's so crazy to me because she recognized that. Like, she knew where I was in my life, and so she, like, asked me certain things and said certain things to, like, get me to pour out. And once I did, she never even responded, but she knew that there was no response needed. Like, I just needed a moment to just heal myself, kind of. So, like, that kind of, like, helped me out a lot. And then, like, you know, I went to therapy, and I got my life together, and Life is good now. Like it was just a growing, it was just a growing period for sure. Yeah, growing pain. Yeah, growing pain. And sorry for your loss. So. Yeah, that's thank you. Yeah, and uh, how would you say your son? What day is his birthday? His birthday is December twenty eighth. Okay, so you're a Capricorn too. He's a Capricorn as well. That's what's up. My birthday yeah. on the eighteenth. Yeah, so he'll be four this year. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what's up. Yep. So what was the pandemic like? Pandemic was a breeze. Pandemic pandemic worked in my favor. Like I said, I was still an undergrad, so I got to stay home, be a mom. You know, like, it was it was good. Um, it was rough. Like, you know, I wasn't, you know, one of those, like, PPP unemployment. <laughs> like, no, it wasn't that. It was not that. I had to get up and take my ass to work. Yeah. So it was, you know, I made it happen. I got my first place during the pandemic. Like, I moved out on my own. It was, it was, pandemic was good for me. Yeah, nice <laughs> yeah. Business was good. Everybody had money to buy my stuff. I was selling out every drop. It was great. So when's the last time you dropped? Uh, I last dropped in March of 2022. Okay. Yeah. So what what's the confidence like? Because um, that's that's what I'm trying like to like figure out now is like when you get the ball rolling, like mm -hmm. you know certain things you got to stay consistent at, but but at the same time. You know, there's people that make power moves. Like you don't gotta, you don't gotta be in their face every day, but you do stuff that they remember. Like so, you can duck off for a year or two. Like yeah, like what, can you speak on that? Like what's your perspective on that? Like just knowing that you can fall back and come back when you want. Um, producing quality work. Like I, if I dropped last in 2022, I guarantee you people still wearing that drop even dropped from 2017, people are still wearing, like, you have to have quality over quantity every time for me. Um, and with my brand, like, I make sure that that's the case. First of all, people don't want to walk around with the same things that the next person got on. So everything is limited. And once it's gone, it's gone. But you know that you can have your jack, your varsity jacket or your hoodie and the letters ain't coming off or, you know, it's not fade in and things like that. So I would definitely say the quality um, definitely plays a role. And you just have to build your audience and build a relationship, a personal relationship. So like I was saying before, a lot of people years back were more interested in, like, me, like Courtney. So it was just like, let me buy a shirt, you know, let me buy a shirt and see what, you know, see what it's like, see what she got going on. And I felt that, but it worked to, it worked, you know, for my advantage, because it was just like everybody was buying everything. Like I didn't have no um, brand ambassadors or influencers. It was just me. And a lot of people appreciated and honored like the fact that I'm a new mom at the time, you know, that some of my jobs was I'm a new mom. I'm in school. They wanted to support that. So it definitely, you know, I would definitely say consistency and just building a relationship with your community, whereas though people want to support you, people want to support anything you do. I could drop a popsicle or liquor, and it's going to sell because people genuinely want to support me. So, and with and with good quality, that comes high prices. Yeah, 
<laughs> so uh, what what's, what's that like of uh, of just you know if you could go the cheap route yeah and probably still profit why is why is it important the quality so important to you um I must be honest and say for like my first few years in business I was doing it off the love that I had for my business it was never about profit and never about money um I was I'm not going to say I was doing business backwards because I wasn't because the relationships that I built are those same people that still will support me today. But I was doing business whereas though, like, I just wanted my brand out there. So it wasn't even about me just making money. I just wanted everybody in ethereal, like the whole at the whole campus, if that's where I was, the whole school, if that's where I was, like I wanted everybody in my stuff. So you know, I was selling shirts for $10, $20, you know. And it was like once the prices and stuff started going up to, you know, a $40 T-shirt. You know, it was kind of like $40 T-shirt. But that they knew the difference between that $40 T-shirt versus that $10 shirt. You know what I mean? So it was like it was no problem purchasing a $40 T-shirt because they knew that what the quality uh, consisted of. But I would definitely say, like, at the beginning, I didn't make a dime. Like, if it cost me $10 to get a shirt made, I was selling it for $10, no profit at all. So it was, like, the love that I had and the drive that I had and the trust that I have in the brand to take me far is what got me where I am. Whereas, though, I feel like, yeah, I could take a year off or two to relaunch, and I'm still going to have the same support that I had because I'm putting the work in necessary, whereas, though, the relaunch is going to be successful. And what's the difference? What's the difference about the relaunch? Like, what's something that you added or something you took out? I'm taking things to another level with the relaunch. Like, um, I'm kind of branching off, like, and from the fast fashion, the hoodies, the t-shirts, sweatsuits. Um, I'm bran- like, I'm that. That's going to still be available for sure because that's where it got me where I am. But I have something different to offer because, like, I actually make clothes cut and sew. So if I have a pattern in my head, I can make the fabric and sew it, and it's a garment now. So I'm definitely offering more custom pieces with the relaunch, um, more men's clothes with the relaunch. Um, I'm doing, like, not, I wouldn't say boutique pieces, but, like, more than one, like, more than a one-of-one custom piece. So, like, my manufacturers, they're working on the designs that I'm coming up with instead of me, you know, sewing them personally. So it's just, like, different things in the brand that um, I was doing in the past that I'm still doing for sure, but I'm taking it to a next level. I'm elevating everything. Yeah. So um, so can you speak about the the three different brands underneath the um, Ethereal umbrella? So you got the shop, create, and experience? Yes. So um, Ethereal Shop is more so like the fast fashion. That's where you're going to get, you know, your hoodies, your T-shirts, your streetwear, your, you know, your luxury urban items. Um, that's where, you know, you can go on the website and buy, you know, a hoodie that's in stock or whatever the case may be. Now, Ethereal Create is the creative side. So you can come to Ethereal Create if you want something custom made, um, if you need graphic design, if you need, like, a creative director, you know, those all fall under the creative side of the brand. And then experience is the beauty part of the brand. So that's where, you know, I was doing lashes. I sell lash supplies, um, lash trays, tweezers, glue, anything needed um, for, like, a lash tech. But I'm taking that to the next level because it's not just lash techs. It's the whole beauty industry. So if you do hair, like, it's going to be combs and hot tools for sale. If you are a barber, same thing. You're going to have shears where everything's going to be branded. Um, so I'm I'm basically just taking everything to the next level, for sure. Yeah, no, that's fire. Yeah. I, I kind of want to, like, steal that business model. Because <laughs> it seems like it's, like, like it's you. Like, yeah. that's the three different services people can get out of you. Exactly. And that's that's why I have, like, the support that I have because, like, I keep saying people are intrigued and people really genuinely support me. So why not? Does it get tough, though, like? um, No. It's not, like, I mean, it gets tough when, you know, you have your dry spells, yeah, but as far as, like, people wanting to be involved, it, it's not bad because I'm a private person, like, you know, like, 
you don't know until you know. So, you know, like I just keep I just keep it cute. Yeah. <laughs> you um is there a lot of people that help you with, with your um brand? Yeah, well recently. Before it was just me. Like no ideas, no graphics, nothing. It's just me. Now, this year I have a team. For sure, I have a team that's helping me execute the event. Um, shout out to Truth Relations. So it's easier, you know, the load isn't as heavy. I'm still heavily involved in, like, any yes or no's, like, any executive um, decisions. But as far as, like, the difficult business part aspect, it's kind of handled for me now, whereas though it gives me enough room to be creative. So... Yeah, now that now I have a team like before I've never reached out to no graphic designer to help me design a shirt or my website. It's always just been me. But this year for the relaunch, I definitely have a team. Yeah. Was it easy to delegate that stuff or or do, are you like a control freak? No, it wasn't easy at all. Like it really took a lot for me. It took months for me to actually like even get the courage to reach out for help. Like I always just want to do everything myself, but you know, I wanted to grow at the same time and I'm like thinking You've been doing it for yourself since 2016. You know, maybe if you get a team of people, you know, you can grow. So it's definitely working. Like, it took me a long time to reach out yeah. for help, whether it was for anything. Like, I don't even want to ask people for feedback as far as, like, you think this design or that one, like, it's all me. Hey, yo, see, you went to Boston School of Art. What, I what, did. What was that like? It was, it was a great experience. I wouldn't trade it for the world. Um... BSA really helped shape and groom me into, like, the creative that I am. Um, like, I branch off into all different types of avenues as far as, like, my creative, like, um, my creative side goes. So it also helped me develop a love for the arts um, that I didn't have before. Um, I would say start, before starting high school, like, I was into, like, science and engineering. I wanted to be an astronaut. <laughs> oh, so you, you, you were like a good student. Yeah, smart. I love science. Um, and then once I got into the arts program, it really shaped me to really have a deep love for art. Um, not just, you know, fashion and costume and theater, more so like the music, visual arts, dance. So um, BSA definitely played a big role in my creative so you like all aspects of art? All aspects of art. What do you think your, your favorite one is? Fine arts. Fine art? Yeah. I enjoy, like, paintings. Um, my favorite artist is Basquiat. So. Yeah, I seen you. Didn't you go to, like, the, um. My my grandmother have a few um prints and paintings. So um, the studio where I did my graduation shoot from when I graduated from Bowie State, I had a painting from him in the background, just to, like, capture, like, you know, the love that I had for fine art. So I felt like that was important, especially because I graduated from um, Bowie with visual communications and digital media arts. My concentration was in fashion design, and my minor was in business. So definitely having that painting in there kind of, like, tied everything together. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so I like used um all right, so, like, one of my questions is, like, what does, like, discipline and dedication mean to you, like, as far as your business? Um, Ethereal. I would say, I would add another word in there, consistency. Mm. Um, because, like, you have to have a certain amount of discipline to be consistent, to be successful. And I feel like um, when I first started the brand in 2016, I had, like, I was just fueling with, like, I had all these ideas. I had all these, like, branches that I wanted to do, like, all these collabs. Like, I really had a deep drive for the brand. And I was young. I was in high school, like, selling T-shirts out of my classrooms. Like, meet me in the hallway. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I got T-shirts on sale. Like, it was really like that. So I would say the dedication to the brand um, really depended on the consistency. Because, yeah, I started in 2016, 
2017, you know, I went to college. It was lit. Like, I had the ball rolling. I had campus on lock. Every single drop I had sold out. 2017, 2018, you know, same vibe. But it was just, like, I wasn't as consistent as I knew I could be. So, like, once 2019 came, you know, I had a few drops. 2019 was, like, a life-changing year for me. So, you know, like, as far as the brand, it was kind of on the back burner. Um, 2020 came, ball rolling. I was lit. <laughs> yeah. 2021, not so much. Like, it was just, like, a roller coaster. 2022, I dropped one time, sold out. That was it. So this relaunch that I'm doing is a really big deal. Like, it, like I've been working on it for so long, for literally, like, two years. So um, I would say to answer your question, like, it kind of go hand in hand. Right. Yeah. So speak speak about, like, and you said, you said a lot just now. <laughs> like, I want to go back to, like, when you was in college. Yeah. So your college experience was more, like, on the entrepreneurship versus, like, everybody else in college, like, Oh, my, my people say I got to mm. go try to do this. Mm-mm. You in there kind of already money-motivated, business-minded. What what was that like? Um, It was it was good. I would say, like, you know, I had the college experience a lot of students have. Like, you know, we in college, we're trying to make things work. We're trying to make ends meet. Um, my support system was great. But I knew that I had to figure stuff out on my own a lot of times, too. Um. I'm a Capricorn, so, like, I'm I'm about my money, and I don't really like having to depend on too many people, so it wasn't really, like, I couldn't depend on, like, my peoples, but I really didn't want to. Um, so, yeah, like, I already had the business. I just had to keep it going because that's how I was eating during college. Um, I had a big platform on campus, not just at Bowie, but, like, at Morgan and other universities as well. So it was easy for me, like, People were intrigued with what I had going on in my personal life and what I had going on on campus and, like, um, the the title that I held on campus and things like that. So they wanted to get close to me. But the only way they could, honestly, is, like, meet up with me on campus to buy a shirt. That's yeah. how you're going to see me in person. Like, it was like that. So I used that as my advantage, honestly. Um, my brand was tied into a lot of the things that I did in school. So... When I was in, like, my um, graphic design class, all the graphics I made was for my brand. You know what I mean? Like, all my projects and stuff went towards, like, my logos, my websites. So I used, like, the education aspect of my life at that time to fuel my entrepreneur aspect of my life. Man. Hey, but um, closing out, like, anything else you want to say about, like, like, the party? Like, yeah. any any, um like exciting news about it yeah so the party is definitely going to be an experience um tickets drop on black friday november 24th um is is an experience that you that the city ain't had before so i want everybody to come i want everybody to look nice ready to network ready to make some money it's going to be a room full of bosses a room full of like the who's who's um i'm being really strategic on the guest list really strategic on who's going to be there um everything is a strategy down from the dj to the photographer like everybody is going to be there networking pouring into each other it's going to be a really nice event so i definitely want everybody to come out you know have a good time be ready to spend some money some merchandise is going to be available that you can only get at the lunch party so it's going to be a great time yeah you get to see a catalog of the things that i'm offering throughout the year um as far as like the three different businesses um, a sneak peek on the launches that's going to happen throughout the year. You can only see them at the event. Um, exclusive merch for the event only. So it's going to be nice. Yeah. Right, I'm so turning probably, 25. <laughs> yeah, I probably got to pull up. Yeah, you got to pull up. I got to sure. get my beige and stuff ready. <laughs> hey, but um, i really closing out, though. Like, Is there anything, like, I feel like, um, I feel like you got, like, a multi-faceted personality. Like, yeah. what what's something about you that people don't know? Um, or like an activity that you might do or like a food you might eat, like a fun fact about Courtney. A fun fact about Courtney, I'm a di- right now, I'm addicted to ramen. <laughs> noodles? Yeah. Oh, no, but like, the, like the fancy kind. The fancy kind, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not little top noodles. <laughs> um, I, 
like, yeah, my personality is kind of addictive. So it's like once I have something that I'm feeling as far as food, I would say. Yeah. Um, I'm eating it for a week straight until I'm tired of it. Like, so right now I'm on the ramen run. <laughs> put, put me on to that, though. Like, like, what, like what's the difference? Like, the 50, 50 cent noodles and, like, what makes it so special? About, <laughs> the broth like, is more rich. Like, you don't, it's, and it's healthier. So I would I would say the broth like I get the spicy miso ramen with chicken, and you know you got the chicken breast, you got the egg. Um, yeah. The actual broth is great, so it's definitely different than you know boiling some noodles on a stovetop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, what, what what you doing like today? Like you got plans for the weekend? Yeah. So um, today me and Jeffrey are shooting an interview, um, with my event stylist. I said an interview. It's more so like a meeting. We're catching up, me and her are catching up. Um, and it's more so like a behind-the-scenes type vibe. So that way we're putting together a film for the event to show, like, the beauty of creating this event and making it happen. So, yeah, we're definitely going to be, gonna be rolling together for the rest of the day. That's fine. Yeah. Like content day. Yeah, content day. I'm for glad sure. we could be a part of that. The yes. photo. <laughs> any, any last word? Um, thank you uh, for having me. And yeah, I'm excited about the event. I no problem. Thank you. Thank you for um pulling up to the floaters, and um catch us at the event. What's what's the day? January 13th. It's a Saturday. All right, January 13th, Saturday. Yep. Ethereal. Yep. Ah, right, we out. <laughs>